Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the December 13th, 2022 meeting of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, as usual, I'm going to open the meeting by reading our public participation policy. The Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings and all other public meetings of the Town of Hatfield. All regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the Town of Hatfield shall be open to the public and shall <coughs> conform Excuse to the me. open meeting law. Executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, I'm going to go to announcements first. We'll get to public forum um, briefly. Well, sadly, we lost the passing of our veteran service officer, Jerry Clark. So uh, he put in a lot of hours for very low pay. Mm -hmm. he, he will be missed by many in this community. So. I just don't know what to say, but that's, mm. that's all I'm going to say. He, he was a good man who did good work, mm. and um, we always appreciated him, and he will be missed. And he was a, you know, he was a veteran, and um, we, we honor and respect that. Yep. I, I, I've known Jerry for decades because we both uh, had a history at Verizon, Ninex, New England Telephone, whatever it is for the years. Ninex. So I got to know him. Through, through telephone company work before then being here in the town of Hatfield. He, he, and he had a great reputation then, and he had a great mm. reputation now. He was a very, very nice man. Mm. And, and my condolences to his family. Yeah. Any other announcements? Well, I mean, we got Luminary coming up. I'm gonna, we have somebody here on the Luminarium to discuss it. I'm I know that there's... Uh, sure, come on up. Uh, Um, so, I'm sure everybody knows who I am, but uh, Carrie Flaherty. So tonight I'm here for part of the uh, Hatfield Firefighter Association um, as the vice president and soon to be president in January. Um, the bonfire that everybody's aware of um, is a great fundraising uh, event for our association. And every year after we do our event, we like to make donations to different parts of things in the community or other um, groups or something that might come up as a suggestion. And we as the Bonfire Committee, which is a small group of us association members, come up with topics and ideas and then we bring it back to the association as a whole and, and vote on as a whole. So this year, um, we, after the bonfire and after meeting last month, have uh, unanimously decided to make a donation um, first to the Friends of the Council on Aging. So we made a thousand dollar donation to um, to the Friends of the COA, um, and that's to hopefully help for them to continue to do their events in the park and any other events that they like to hold throughout the year. Um, we are donating, which I have for you tonight, uh, fifteen hundred dollars to the Celebration Committee to help continue with those events that the Celebration Committee will continue to put on since it started from the 350th and we have now changed into that. And the last donation will be a $2,500 donation to the Smith Academy Athletic Booster Club to help put dugouts for the varsity baseball fields so that both the varsity softball field and the baseball fields will have full dugouts for sporting events. Um, so I just wanted to be able to bring this tonight and uh, give it to you all, I already spoke to the celebration committee last week because they were meeting and I went down and told them that this is what we were doing, but I know that the check has to kind of come to the town and then goes to their group. So um, I just figured this was the place to make that announcement tonight. Well, I, that's amazing. All three mm. of those um, donations are totally amazing. Great so it's amazing that one event where we have so much fun can then go on to help sponsor so many other events where yeah, we're also going to have and fun. I know I speak for the whole group of us that do this. Um, it puts a lot, it's a lot of time and energy that we all put into it, um, but it ends up being a great event each year. This year was, I, I might have my years off, but it's either our ninth or 10th year of doing it. And um, we're super grateful. We've been able to purchase uh, equipment that ends up not having to be the town's expense. Um, and 
uh, you know, we purchased our utility That's truck at one point in time from the association also. So it, the money goes towards a lot of great things for us as a department. Um, but we also have the ability to make great donations throughout the years to other places too. So we're, we're grateful to be able to do this this year for all those three groups and look forward to next year's event to hopefully either make donations again to all those same groups or to at least, you know, help out other groups in the town too. We've been able to help the Legion, um, the Lions, uh, yeah, the Lions Club. So, and there's been others, the Shriners we've made donations to and stuff. So there's been other groups that we've been able to help out too. So. Yeah. A lot of, nice. lot of good things over the years have come yeah. from all, what I know is a lot of <laughs> hard work. Yes. <laughs> a lot of crazy <laughs> a lot hard of time work. And energy, but we all put yeah. it in. It's not just one or two people. There's a lot of us that throw our time in. So. And it's such a great event. Yes. And we're thankful yeah. for everybody that comes and supports it because it does turn out to be a great event each year. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's very generous and we appreciate it very much. Did you want to, you said you had some information well, I about. I don't really have information about Luminaria, other than it is this Saturday night, the association and the fire department is going to have our normal, um, you know, dr uh, hot, co uh, hot coffee and hot chocolate um, and uh, Atkins donuts after the music out front. Um, and then I know that I believe the chief um, had informed us at drill last week that fireworks, I believe, I don't know if it's on the list, but I think it's at 640 they go off to give people time to, finish with music out front and get to where they might want to be to be able to watch the fireworks. Obviously you can pretty much see them from anywhere in town, but to give them that ability to be able to enjoy out front before. And are, the, is the road closed down again like last time? I, be, I don't they want to stop speak for the traffic, police department, yeah. but I believe so. I, I Last I knew, I know that Chief Dekoshek had said he'll be here Saturday, so I'm assuming the same, he'll have a few of their officers and they'll stop traffic for that time period right. of the okay. fireworks like they did last year. I'm sure they'll do that this year. I mean, I, I just go by what I read online. There was a uh, post that online that it, it starts at 6. They're asking everybody to light the candles at 530. Right. And then the, the police chief requested everybody to keep their headlights on. Yes, the police chief uh, wants everybody the to keep their headlights on. <laughs> Which and is not how we, we used to do be it. There will be nobody so allowed different. near the elementary school or Lions Pavilion for the fireworks. <coughs> so Excuse me. I assume they're going to do the same as last year. Correct. So nobody will be able to go down um, beyond the school area um, past, I can't, I don't know the exact time, but I think it's, it's early. either one, it's like one, early. maybe two o'clock. It's early in the afternoon. And that's because once the fireworks display starts being arranged, it will be um, blocked off and people will not be able to be in that area until probably the next day by the time they finish everything in the evening and secure the location. So that does take up a few hours of time, but just so people know that you won't be able to be, I mean, now there's snow, but you won't be able to be down there and in the back fields or anything like that for any reason. Or park down there. Or park down there. That's right. not there's a parking, no parking option. down there either. So if anybody sees the fire trucks there or the fire crews or anything like that parked blocking traffic, that would be why. Right. So. Oh, well, I mean, it worked out well last year. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, and well, I'm excited, I believe, would... if I read it correctly, the um, Congregational Church, they're doing their, their choir is um, doing their event this year, which is great that that's back and happening. And I think it's after the fireworks. It's after the, yeah, it's after the fireworks, but that's always was an important part of yeah. Luminarium as a whole. So it's nice to see that they're able to do that again. I know COVID kind of put a damper on that. So it's yeah. great to see that they're doing that again. Prettiest night in town. It is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Well, thanks for the donation. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Um, for the one to us and the one to the other organizations. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. Thanks, Thank Karen. you, Carrie. Um, so that kind of morphed into um, public forum, too. Is anyone else here for public forum? Any other announcements? No, I mean, this is our last meeting before Christmas. Right. So I just want to say Happy Christmas to everybody and wish everybody happy holidays before we forget because we get and, through the and happy new year and we're, even, right? because we're not we don't meet right until january now Correct. so um yeah happy new year happy holidays okay so our first um article of posted business is we're joined tonight by rich abbott who is chair of the open space committee rich you want to come up yeah. I'll get that. Hmm? we'll just do the minutes, the minutes. after this oh okay sorry i skip i skipped the minutes we're gonna I got, I got all uh, out of sorts, but that's okay. So Rich, you, we have a vote to approve changes to the architectural services authorization. Um, this is for the pavilion in the center of town. Did you want to speak yeah, to that? So we, you know, trying to get the 
back on track with the pavilion construction. Um, everyone would like to see it up there soon. Um, so a couple months ago, we reached out to the firm that did the previous cost estimate, which, as you may remember, was over $300,000. We reached out to them in hopes that maybe costs have gone down, um, but not so much. <laughs> You know, I, I, things might have gone down, but the things gone. Appreciate up. your optimism, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, you know, we have, you know, don't really have much confidence that we can proceed with that design and actually get it built. So, um, what we like wanted to go forward with is a new, totally new design, which is a timber frame type structure, much simpler, um, I think affordable, much significantly less cost than. Um, what our current design is, and certainly within, well within the funds that we have. Um, we've reached out to a couple of uh, timber frame firms, and um, the way that works, they do all the cutting and basically all the engineering on their site, and then come in and put it up. Um, and, you know, based on what they were giving us the figures, you know, like I said, it's a significantly less cost. The other issue is that we've run into is we do need a general contractor. The timber frame folks will put up the structure, but we need someone to coordinate the work, someone to coordinate the, the electrician and the roofers. And in the past, you know, because we're over that threshold, which is $150,000, the state requires the contractor to be DCAM certified. And there's just a limited amount of contractors that are certified because there's a cost associated to it. Um, so we did reach out with two uh, local firms who are DCAMP certified just to sort of run this idea about that they would be a GC under um, for a timber frame thing and they were, you know, they were interested. So I we're kind of confident on that end too. Um, so what the contract or proposal you have um, in front of you is from our architect, Laura Fitch, who has hung in there with us for a a number of years and has really gone over and above what she's been paid for. So, and the way she has this contract, which she kind of has this rollover cumulative type thing, but basically this is uh, allocating an additional $17,000, half of which um, is for her, she has to subcontract out someone who does a timber frame specifications. It's, you know, it's not particularly in her. Um, realm of experience. So she'll still coordinate the total design, but there's certain specifications for timber frame design that um, she needs a specialist for. So that's what the sort of part two is, and the part three is her, is her piece. Um, so, you know, if we go ahead and reach agreement with her again, then we would be within the next couple of weeks, hopefully, or certainly by the beginning of January, meeting with her and it should be a fairly quick process in terms of coming up with a design. We have, um, you know, there's only so many basic things you can do with a timber frame. You know, a couple of gables and um, determine the height and all that. Um, <coughs> we would be going Excuse out to bid in February and, you know, fingers crossed, get everything built this year, which I know people really like to see a structure up there. So we don't, we don't know what it would look like? No, we have, I can give you a, because um, we, the, you know, the design's not here. I can give you a, a sort of a, on, you know, photo that kind of is generally what a timber design would look like. Okay. But, I mean, wasn't the big to-do that townspeople voted on a particular design? Yes, and that's why. I, I mean, I know that that has been deemed not, you know. Right, that's why I felt like that. Thanks, you know. Rich. And so it would look similar to this, and what, I yeah, mean, this is fairly small. What, what would the... It's dimensions a, it's being. a 22 but approximately 22 or 24 either 22 by 22 or 24 by 24 the pad oh, I believe, so that pad, might... I believe is 30 by 30. Yeah, and no. the whole idea was to have a little bit of Outside. spillover yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right um and yes the, the the you know we did have a sort of a referendum of three designs and the one that was chosen was the one we were had been working on but it's just not unfortunately not likely to happen. and so do you have a 
ballpark of how much less this would be? Or I mean, I know it's difficult. We, yeah. you know, it's certainly nothing. My fingers crossed. I think everything in would be under two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Actually, actually, I'd like to commend your committee because this has been a long process. It we've really has. You, fraught with we've asked you a couple of times <laughs> to go back and try to get the price down. And, and I know it's not exactly the design that everybody wanted, but yeah. it, it was just so expensive for that, that last design. If, if I it, hold this up, do you think you could? And I think, uh, I think, I think it's been a long process, and I, I think we should move ahead with this because it's, yes. it's been needed. Yeah. And and we're we're not if we keep waiting we're only going to get the prices to go up. Yeah, and unfortunately that's not a color picture, but you know the it's a um, Douglas fir is the standard timber they'd use in that. It's you know it's a very attractive um, color and I, I like the looks yeah, of it. I think yeah. it's nice. Yeah. It, it is pretty basic. I mean you see a lot of pavilions along, around the you know the sort of the um, accents or what have you would have might be you know with the little bit curve of uh, archway on the, right. on the enter. But you know, it's not, you can't do a whole lot with the design. It's pretty basic. So Which then keeps the cost we're approving more money? For the architect. For the art, and yeah. where's that money coming from? It's, it would be from the CPA funds that are available. For the entire project. Yeah. But you think that you'll be okay because there'll be a cost savings on the? Yes, okay. I, I, you know, I don't think, in our mind, like I said, we've reached out to two different firms, got some prices, and it's hard for them to give us a firm price, obviously. Right. Um, and as long as we get a general contractor interested, we think, you know, we have more than enough funds to get it done. Okay. Okay. I'm I mean, we're, it's the money already approved. Right, and, and spending approved money. And I know they don't want to keep going back and forth. Right. And it's been a long process. It's been a hard process to try to bring it within a budget that's mm -hmm. reasonable. And it was way too expensive for the last design. But now with a timber frame, it's probably better for, for Hatfield. Yeah. Things have a way of working out. Yeah, in the and end, it, it, you, know? you know, it will look sort of like a natural, you know. Yeah, I think it will look good. You know, I think it will look nice. It's a, it's a nice um, rendering, what you've given us. So. Yep. Um, so do we need to vote this? Yes, please. So okay. a, a contract will be drawn up for the board to sign. But I have voting it. tonight. Oh, Isn't this, this is... the contract I have? This is with Laura Fitch. Well, is this the change order this they're is... authorizing? Yeah, yeah. And that's... So we'll still need a contract, though, for her services. Oh, no? uh, whatever. I don't, I'm not sure. Well, either for her. Oh, or... so I see. This is actually... For her. Change order for her existing contract. Right. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Cumulative thing. And then the I contract understand. for the builder okay, got it. eventually got will it. come. Okay, yeah. so Never then mind. we can just mm -hmm. do we, but we vote to sign this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, make a motion to approve this. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No, I just want to thank you and your committee because you've been working at this for a few years now, right. and I know it's been hard. It it's required so. some patience on your part, and yeah, we appreciate I, that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And it's this is just for me uh, to sign, yeah, it looks right. like. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, and Rich. And your committee. <laughs> See you next month. <laughs> <laughs> and a month after, and a month after. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So I'm sorry. Let's backtrack and do minutes. Yeah. I'll make I would, a motion to... Oh. I, I um, had had a quick discussion with Karen before the meeting on the October 26th and the November 29th um, executive session minutes. I had some suggested changes, so can we table those? She'll um, make those changes and present them next time. It's okay with me. Was there a particular executive session on the 29th? Because I think we had two. There's two. The, um, the first one... Um, that was at 5 p.m. Because one was after the meeting. Yeah. So the, the 5 p.m. one, I just had some. Hold off. Or just, to just to put aside until yep. uh, a few changes are made to those. Right. So I will make a motion to approve the November 29th regular session meeting and the November 29th executive session second meeting that was held at 8.22 p.m. 8.22 p.m. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat>
Um, so now we have the agreement between the Town of Hatfield and the Teamsters Union Local 404, Unit A, which is the laborers. Yep, so that contract just, um, the select board had uh, approved it. the, right. um, the tentative agreement with what was added or changes made. This is the complete contract for the board's signature. And so do we, we don't need to re-vote it. it. We just, no, you don't. Okay. This one is for all three of us. Brian, thanks for your work on that. That was um, really something you oh. took the lead on, and we appreciate that. I appreciate <clears> that. <throat> Excuse me, you're welcome. My thanks to Marlene as well. Yeah, a lot of work. Yep. And Phil. Thank you, Brian does, does very well at those meetings. Thank okay, you. the electrical permit fee schedule. Come on up. Mr. Pachorik. Hi, Tim. Miss, you're visiting us all the time lately. You all have uh, copies hats. of yes. the fee schedule? Okay, yes. <laughs> yep. So did you want to speak to this just so residents know yeah, so what you're basically proposing? The uh, fee schedule hadn't been changed for, best we could tell, 10 to 15 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I know Kyle was just saying in the last eight years he doesn't remember it being changed, and I think it's been it's it's been over ten, I believe. So the fees are way outdated. So what I did is uh, in the last uh, well, last ver bunch of months, probably six months, I've I've been looking at uh, fee schedules in about 63 different towns, um, all of which which uh, I personally work in. So I'm familiar with those fee schedules. And then um, I really modeled our fee schedule compared to about 20 towns and communities right around us. Um, but I looked at all the fee schedules in that, uh, that six, uh, 63 fee schedules that I was telling you about. And um, some, were, some of their fee schedules were way out of whack. Just to give you an example, um, um, uh, City of Amherst has uh, um, a fee schedule for a generator that costs about $350 to put a generator in, but you could wire a whole house for, I think it's $200, um, multiple inspections. So that's what I mean by out of whack. So I looked at our schedule and, um, and put a lot of thought into it. Um, for the most part, for residential, the minimum inspections used to be $50. They're, they're 60 now. So they went up $10, not a lot. Um, the commercial and um, agricultural, for the most part, stayed the same. As a matter of fact, it actually got better for um, some of the smaller jobs. So if we have, let's say, somebody takes out a permit to wire an air conditioner, instead of the minimum, what used to be $250 plus a percentage of the job cost, now it's, I want to say, about $100 for a minimum inspection. Because it didn't make sense to charge um, a commercial customer just because they're commercial or just because they're a farmer that, you know, however much, you know, it didn't make sense to charge a huge amount of money when some of these might be a minor repair that um, an inspector could come out one time and the inspection fee was more than the whole job cost for right. the, so that didn't make a whole lot of sense. But we did up, um, you know, the single family homes, some of the renovations. Um, we put in, we made the commercial and industrial agricultural a little easier to understand. Um, for the most part, our, our new buildings and renovations for commercial is based on the job cost. Um, and that pretty much stayed the same, um, but we added the optional method of if it was a smaller job. Um, and there's a third method. Uh, it's pretty much spelled out mm -hmm. a little easier than it was before. I used to get calls all the time for people trying to, you know, understand the permits, or they would send in a permit for fifty dollars when it should have been three hundred fifty dollars, or, um, and so it's a little clearer now for contractors to see. Um, and I just broke up a, a, a bunch of different, um, like for instance, a, a in-ground pool is one cost, where an above-ground is is another cost. And the one thing that we added was a trench fee. Um, we didn't used to have that in the fee schedules, and that's one extra inspection that we have to go out for. So we added <coughs> if, it, if whatever job um, has to also have a trench involved, then we added that trench fee, so there's an additional fee for that. Um, 
And solar was where probably the biggest change out of the whole thing. Uh, solar was a $50 fee. Um, it's now a minimum of $250 for residential. Um, and the reason is the number of inspections, the size, the, the cost of the job as a whole, um, and just more paperwork involved. So um, our the assistant inspector, which is Craig Neal, who's behind me, um, he's, uh, I call him my solar guru because he <laughs> works in the solar industry. So um, he also knows a lot of the permit fees in a lot of the different other towns. And he says, I don't know why it's so low here. And that's one of the things, again, it's one of those that were out of whack. So that got adjusted to be closer to the other communities around us. That's it. Well, this is certainly for approval on, on the new fee schedule. Very well thought out, and you know, it, it's great that there's sort of more consistency, but it's still very reasonable fees, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, yeah the, so. the fee increases, which were necessary and had been so yeah. many years, but they're fair. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, we didn't, right. you, you guys aren't proposing doubling this or tripling that right. or anything like it's just right. you know, cost of things yeah. go up, yeah. the cost of people's time goes up, mm -hmm. and uh. Instead they seem very fair. Instead of going 10 or 15 years, I'd like to revisit maybe every two years. Yeah. I think that's even smart. If it's a, even if it's a 5 or $10. We're, we're a little guilty of that on a, on a number of different things, sort right. of wanting to keep things, you know, and then it, it catches up with you sometimes. So that's probably a great, great plan. But a lot of time and thought and work and expertise went into that, and I appreciate it, Tim. Okay. Uh, I, I don't have any. I just had a quick question. So are these online somewhere? Or will they be online? Can they be online? Gold so if somebody wants is, to know, and yeah. We'd like to get this okay. updated as soon as possible. Great. And now normally. I, I didn't know when you would want to put it. Uh, well, just if somebody's curious what they're going to cost last me. Time we changed you know. fees, it was approved as of like the first of the year. Or so. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think yeah. we should do. Mm -hmm. Do it as of the first of the year. Is that what you would recommend, first yeah, of the I year? Yeah, I think that makes. Effective yeah. January 1st. Gives people one. time to get their permits in before the first <laughs> before the heads up I no. doubt there'll be a mad scramble no, on this but but really though um, I don't know if Gerard wants to do you know how we do this but I know when there are other increases in other towns me as a contractor I typically some of them will notify us and say this is effective such and such make sure you know about it um, and then uh, others just throw it up on the and you send in a permit fee and they call you and say that's not the right fee, and you got to send it. So, however, I don't know if it you have a recommendation. Be a good idea if he has a mailing list to, to do a, a short mailing of the most common contractors. Yeah, yeah. Um, or that's fax numbers idea. or what have you, or mm. even emails. And Should we make it February first to be fair to? No, I'd still January first. Still yeah. January first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we'll yeah. try to we'll try to see. This is where my next step on online permitting would be so handy. Right. Because you'd have everybody's email address. Right. You just fire it right to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, well, so it is the way the world works now. Fees, yeah. So. Being able right. to do things online. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, we'll take this first step. Sounds okay. good. Uh, so we need to take a vote on okay. these. Uh, thank you for all the work you guys put into this. This yeah. is pretty good. And just your work in general. We appreciate yeah, you. Awesome to work with. So. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Town of Hatfield electrical permit fee schedule as presented, effective January 1st, 2023. I'll second that. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? Oh, no. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Easy. Thank you again, Tim, Craig. Thank you. Kyle. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, so next we have MassWorks grant front funding from the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. This is the contract. Right. So this I is signed the this. additional $1.5 million. Okay. So if, for the record, the board would vote to accept this contract with MassWorks for that amount. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the MassWorks grant funding for additional MassWorks grant funding for the Route 5 water and sewer project as presented. I'll second that. Thank you. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next, we have um, our DPW director in. Phil, do you want to come up? And um, the, the uh, topic that Phil is here tonight is to discuss a new hire for wastewater operations. And there's just a quick little explanation that probably would be helpful for townspeople um, to have on this. This is, there's a... Um, We'll be hiring Eric Meals, who was our former wastewater treatment 
superintendent. Um, maybe you just want to explain. So, <clears throat> DEP regulations for that plant calls for two grade four, well, let me just step back, one grade four and one grade three license holder. We currently have one grade four superintendent and we have one operator in training who is, has his grade two. So in order for him to go up to a four, he has to have a little bit of experience as well as taking another test for the grade four license. He could surely take the grade three, but my conversation with him has been, why not just go for the four and we'll have two four operators down there. So in the meantime, to comply with DEP's non-compliance violation, we need to hire a part-time operator that has a grade four license or more. So currently, Eric holds a grade six license, which is far and few to have somebody with that quality license. And we reached out, and before contacting Eric, I reached out to D DPC, our consulting engineer, and he was willing to come aboard, but the cost would have been two times as great, so. Someone other than Eric. Yeah. Yes, so okay. I reached out to Eric, and Eric is willing to come back and in front of you have that job. <clears throat> and how, how, min, how many hours and how long? We work eight hours. DEP is requiring between <clears throat> eight and ten, so we're going to put him at eight hours a week to come in, and he will be, you know, the person that's reporting to DEP with the licenses and whatever needs to be done. He's going to do in that eight-hour time, uh, and then we'll be in compliance until the operating training completes his grade four, grade three license. Do you have an estimate? I'd say four months at the most. Okay. I would say. And this is in this is within your line to afford yeah, this? Yeah, so the, mm -hmm. we don't need any funding because when the Eric left as a superintendent, that was he was funded from July on and we didn't hire the new uh, employee till no, October. So, so there's, there's money in that okay. budget. Well, I appreciate that Eric is willing, you know, right. to come back and do this. <clears throat> when I saw this, I was very excited thinking Eric was coming back. <laughs> but, um, all right, so uh, we just need a motion then to approve this. Any questions or do you? No, I, I think it's great that Eric's coming back and it puts us in compliance so we're, we're not getting into any kind of litigation or anything. And so that, that works out I mean, we don't want to pay fines or... I mean, that's what it would come down to. If you're in non-compliance and you don't do anything about it, you would be fine. So, I'll make mm -hmm. a motion to. Uh, we need a motion on this to yes. accept. I'll make a motion to accept uh, this uh, part-time hire for. Let's see, four months at least, maybe. And maybe, un maybe we can uh, word it until certification until, is yeah. received mm -hmm. by. Um, until Let's really which stay time on top is of that. Deemed appropriate. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll second that. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, please thank Eric for us. Ed, that needs to be signed. Okay, thanks, Phil. Anything else? The nice first job on go. the storm. Oh. I left very early and the roads were great. Yeah, uh, yeah, we completed the roads and the sidewalks and treated what we had to treat. Uh, you know, I mean, it was, thank God, light snow. But what happened is that the ground was so warm that it packed in places. So it wasn't like it just was so cold that, you know, it just blew off the road. So, you know, we had a few issues around, but no major breakdowns. And the guys worked a few hours longer than they wanted to, I think. But that was long, <clears throat> it all turned out. Long. Good. Another one coming. Another one coming Thursday, so it's supposed to be a little warmer, rain mixed, you know. Like I said, give me a foot of snow and <laughs> don't give me any of that mixed stuff, so. Right. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Yep, thanks, Phil. Okay, the next topic is the 2023 annual license renewals. Oh, wait a minute. Can I Do we... for just a moment? Yes. Well, while Kyle's here, he um, left for each of you um, a proposal with full circle technologies. This is yes. a software program mm -hmm. um, for, for building permits. Did you want to speak to that just a little bit, if, if it's okay, if that's sure. acceptable? 
So it's for online permitting, which um, residents and contractors would be able to go online, make out their building permits. If they had a, from a shed to a new house, whatever, you attach the documents, upload them, and it goes right to us. Uh, electrical, for these guys that just left, uh, electricians can go online, make out their own permits, plumbers can go on. That you, they do have an option where the town residents can also look at permits because um, you get curious people, so they can do that on occasion. Um, look at someone's building permit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and see well, what's it's public happening record, in town. Right? It's public yeah. record, right? Public record. Right. Actually, saves picking a person picking up the phone and answering the questions <laughs> that they can find themselves. Um, it's streamlined, so it would a report would get. Uh, generated to the tax collector. In other towns I've worked in, you won't issue a building permit if the person has a lot of outstanding uh, real estate or something due taxes. Oh, even good. even excise on cars, they won't issue a permit, most towns. So what happens is uh, Patty or somebody in the tax collector's office would sign off each permit before it comes to me to issue it and approve it with the fee. It go, the money goes right into Unibank, um, so they can pay online. Where we pay our stuff now, I think. Yeah, it's a very, very nice system. Yeah. And this one I've worked with before this full circle. So this is, is this something you're going to maybe put into your budget, or is this a cap? I mean... I would like if we could consider getting it started even now, um, if there's funds available. Marlene set, suggested there might be, but then... And on an annual basis, yes, yeah, so I'd pick it up in my new budget. How much is it to get started? Seventy-five hundred, um, and then there's some other uh, options that you would need. At, it's probably in the twelve thousand range to get it set up for now, and then the annual uh, subscription fee would be um, four thousand one sixty. It's on page seven, Diana. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see oh. that. Wouldn't the assessor's office have access to this as well? Yes, the assessor yeah. would have <clears throat> it. Right, that, yeah. It would be very helpful to, mm -hmm. to Jen. Yeah. It would even be helpful to the finance committee wondering if our tax base grows because they'd be able to see what's in there. You know, because a lot of times they don't see new individual growth, new permits. Growth, yeah. New growth, Later. yeah, yeah. For instance, we just got a permit in a million seven for CNS on Elm Street. I mean, all these things, the finance committee would be able to monitor more what our revenues are. It's, a, it's got a lot of pluses. And so where, where are you suggesting this money comes from? Well, potential money, perhaps ARPA funds, if the select board was willing to consider that. Um, otherwise, yes, it would have to be. Either way, if, if it's not funded in this oh, yeah. current year, he would be proposing that for his FY24 budget. Um, and, and that would include um, the one-time cost plus the end. And it also thing. reduces paper clutter. It all goes on to a server. So you don't have hard manual files anymore. And then it would free up the clerks like Gerard because he wouldn't be manually mailing people back electrical permits and so forth. They'd be generated. I approve it online. My signature attaches to it, and it gets emailed right back to the person after they pay. So it's, it makes a lot of sense. Well, it makes a lot of sense. To, you save on labor. You save on a lot of stuff. Yeah. It makes it accessible to everybody. And talking to Kyle earlier, the fees that they generate are usually more than the cost within his yes. department. So the fees that are generated already are are higher than what the departmental costs are. Yeah, and take, this may even generate, this will save some money on the labor costs, and this will actually make it accessible to everybody. Will it save money on labor costs? I mean, we're not going to reduce the line by anything, right? I mean, it might free well, people free, up to do other work. Yeah, it would free up somebody like Gerard to do other right, functions. Right, right. The assistant assessor and I with Kyle saw a demonstration of this program a few weeks back, and, and I was really impressed. Well, and you know, it's just the way people do business now, right? I mean, it's just really bringing us into the it's into a the great, present. Great it's, thing for the assessors. It's a great thing to make sure people don't have large amounts of outstanding real estate tax, and then you keep giving them permits. Um, it cuts it cuts out some of the 
unsavory aspects of building too, like people, um, you know, trying to cheat without a license or, you know, there's a there's a lot of safeguards to it. Well, how does it help that? I mean, they st well they be could st because it tends to you can have it linked so they have to record their license number. And then you can do Oh, I see, without a license. Yeah. I see. OK. I thought you meant without a permit. No, no, okay. no. All right. No. Um, but without a permit, yeah. it actually helps, too, because you can have a tablet right in your car. You drive by <laughs> X number on Bridge Street, and you go, geez, did I issue them a permit for that? And you just type in the address, and it'll show you if they have one. OK. So. I, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's makes things a lot more convenient for the people doing business in town. Mm. All the local things. towns have done it. Hadley, uh, West Hampton, South Hampton, Deerfield is looking at the same company. Um, so it's widely done. Yeah, it's time to park the horse and get a car. OK. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to ask a question, but I, uh, in thumbing through this, I already see it. So there's some, some training you know, is, yeah, is also be. included in, yes. in the initial startup mm -hmm. and, and cost. I used programs similar to this in Northampton, but um, the other town I deal with right now, Southwick, uses this company. And from my sitting at the chair and seeing it for the first time, I, could, I was whipping out permits within three days. Right. So it's not a hard program. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you, do we need to, is there adequate ARPA funds left to cover this? And the current cash available is 124,000. That's okay. readily but, available but in th that, now. That's not already committed to other it's things. It's not committed. Okay. okay. I think it's. It certainly seems like a well worth program. Yeah. I, I think, um, and, and I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to know um, whether, it's, whether it's right now, if you have the answer, Kyle, or we can just get it in the next couple of days, is exactly what the first year is going to cost. Or, I, I mean, I can see it's 7,800, basically. It looks. I can to, put to start it in with our, then, my content. Well, well, just so we know what we're voting on at the time we vote, we're going right. to need we're going to need an exact we're going to need an exact number. I would right. believe it's actual... I would believe it's no more than twelve thousand. So, if you wanted to approve the limit up to twelve thousand now, yeah. it looks like the first year would be just yeah. under twelve. If, right. if, mm -hmm. if what I'm reading on this yeah. is That's like right. you said, page seven yeah. is yeah. yeah. And so I guess all I well, it doesn't matter. They. The company wouldn't care what our annual thing is, but I'm just wondering. Well, I wonder if they would prorate it at this well, that, point. That's what I yeah. was. That's the what annual I was, fee is for. The one is the one time regardless. Marlene, yeah. what I can do is I can give you my contact name and number for down there, and mm -hmm. you could talk to her I'll directly, to. Pamela. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. Um, yeah, because you, we, if we started this, if we entered into the agreement January 1st, then it would six, just be really that should six, be well, two thousand. Well, that's dollars. that's kind of where I was yeah. going and then with this. So 4,000 starting on July 1 right. would be. When it right. actually comes live is a delay anyway because it has to be formatted and beta, I believe they said. Yeah. Well, we're meeting again in a couple of weeks. I, I, it sounds like we have a consensus certainly to move forward. We're just well, going to need to know the numbers. Until, uh, right? For almost a month. Well, first week of okay. January. Let's get it done. Can Brian. we can we vote to approve it up to up to 12,000? Up to 12,000, 12, but with the understanding that we fully expect that annual fee to be prorated, prorated appropriately yeah if possible i mean mm -hmm. we don't know how they you know maybe they run a calendar year and we run a, a, a you know uh, every six I months i believe they yeah. run fiscal year oh okay well so. but i would think they would understand that i'm going to, understand I'm going to if they're I'll working with municipalities this them, is how it works i would so. expect they would understand that so i would approve would. it another thing too i think you can go to them they want new customers sure you can go to them and go hey this is what it is do you want it you know yeah or next you know right. we talk to another company so i would say we approve it up to whatever amount with the caveat that we expect that annual fee to be prorated appropriately okay mm -hmm. so i'll make that motion that we approve this um the annual the um the what's the startup seven, cost this, or whatever the, you want to call yeah the actual it. startup so. cost with um the annual fee prorated appropriately January 30th right that's what we're June trying 30th. to do June 30th June 30th yeah. through June 30th, June 30th. June 30th. And from whatever the start time actually is. Yes, from yeah. whatever till. And uh, 
we're all in an amount. Uh, we could probably say in an amount up to ten thousand, so that we Correct. know that it's got to be pro yeah. prorated. Yeah. So be 12, I'll, I'll put 000, that in the motion yeah. up to ten thousand dollars, and to okay. have that pa paid for by with ARPA funding. Second. Anything, Ed? No, I'm, I think you've got it all figured out now. We're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay. good. Okay, <laughs> so a motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yep. Um, so we have this um, appointment here from the fire chief. This is on the um, position that was Kyle. approved at the last meeting. We don't need to vote. This is a, just a signature, right? Correct. Um, but uh, it doesn't have a, oh, it's effective December 18th. So just for the sake of townspeople knowing, um, the, there is a full-time firefighter EMT that will be brought on effective December 18th. And this is a second shift, right? There's like 3 in the yeah. afternoon to 11 p.m. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know what would be nice maybe if we could have this gentleman yep. come in for yeah, a meeting so nice. that townspeople yeah. could meet. I, I talked to the fire chief um, a couple of weeks ago about, you know, maybe him posting an announcement on, on their website, the fire department's website about this <laughs> and, you know, that um, funds had been su were supported for, for the higher yeah, full Yeah, but it might be nice for townspeople. So he said he will be to... doing that, but yeah, I, th I agree, yeah, that would maybe be Maybe nice we could to try to, I don't know what the January 10th, agendas okay. looking like, but maybe we could try to get Invite him in. Get him in. Because he should be on shift <coughs> at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He would so be. Yep. Karen, on this twenty twenty three seasonal population increase estimation form, is that does that require a vote? No. No, I to sign it. That is if we were a town um, at our limits. Like a vacation. Oh, oh yeah, okay. But it's not. Okay, it just says not applicable. And then this other renewal certification, it's all blank. Do you fill that in afterwards? It stays blank. It stays blank? Yeah. We just sign a blank form? Okay. This is the renewal certification 2023. Um, oh, and that, oh, I see why it's blank because there's, it's, it's to there say if we any... failed to renew anyone right. or if right. we disapproved. Right. Okay. Yeah. So That's we should right. probably take these up first, and then we'll do those. So now the um, we are going to go through and approve our 2023 license renewals. Um, and so um, this says still says 2022. I don't know that it matters. It's just a memo, but it probably should say 2023. Um, and I, in looking at these, the Mill River, so under full liquor licenses, there's Mill River Ventures. Was that? It's going to continue Mill River Ventures yeah. until I haven't even gotten the paper. Right. Okay. They so still, we, we're going to yeah. approve this so they have a current license yeah. at the transfer yeah. time. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then there was one other one um, that I think I, no, I guess <clears> that was it. I guess that was the only one that I, I had a question about. Okay. Anybody else have any questions about these? No. Nope. So these we are approving our liquor licenses, which is all the different types of liquor licenses, including package store, restaurants, clubs, farm winery, um, but also our class uh, one, two, and three auto dealer licenses, our entertainment licenses, and our automatic amusement licenses. So those are all in, in do we do we need to itemize those or we can vote them as presented? presented yeah. Okay. And all the inspections <coughs> are complete. And we can just sign the these. inspections are complete. There are four establishments that I have to pull the license. Okay, until so okay. I hear back from the fire yeah. yeah. I saw the emails and I just didn't know if they were complete. Four that are excuse me, four that are not on here. They are. Um, you're going to sign them. I just need to hold them. Gotcha. Got it. Issue Got it. it. Got until it. she gets right. notification from the fire We just don't chief. give it to them. Okay. Right. Got it. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Well, and I'm sure he'll get there in a timely fashion. So, okay. So 
we can do one vote on all of these licenses. And just for townspeople to know, we are reinstating the fees on these licenses. Yes. We had, um, you know, in an effort to help businesses that were really struggling during the pandemic, we had done away with the licensing fees for a while, but we have reinstituted those now. Mm -hmm. So I'll take a motion and then we can just sign as we move through the rest of the meeting, I guess. So before I make the motion, Diana, so, but we also have different categories of licenses. Yeah. So are we doing all the licenses in this one motion? For example, we've got all licensing um, installers, septic haulers, all those things. So in, my, in our motion, I didn't know if we were doing it all. I thought we were doing the ones that were listed in the memo. Well, this was another... This was in there that as well. There I was going to say, so oh, I don't need. Yeah. Oh, that one is just for you to take a look at. Okay. So this way you can see what each license on okay. the we're, different we're, licenses and the total amount brought in for the town for this year. Okay. So that includes for the Board of Health licenses. license, all licenses. I was going to say, yeah. we have yeah. commercial haulers. We don't yeah. license yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you board of okay. Health. Sure yeah. Okay. Made the vote once or the motion once. But so you're not voting on that part. Got it. Just, just it's the memo. You know what's interesting is it's our licensing fees are very low. They are. I wonder how they compare to other communities. But like the entertainment and amusement, I think those are the max. You can't charge any more than what we already are charging because that's regulated by statute. Yeah, I mean, I get that, that some of them are, but some, some of these are, um, you know, pretty low. I just want to make sure we're mm -hmm. on the money, that's all. The Board of Health raised their fees back, I want to say September. Mm -hmm. Oh. And so Okay. Okay. Are you guys? Are Might you, be something to look at for next yeah, year we could, because we could do that. We're, look at the liquor one. We've waived them the last two years for our restaurant well, or for our liquor licenses. Well, right? well those so, licenses. Yeah, I was talking about some, oh, of, some the of the others. Some of the others. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I will make a motion yeah. to approve the licenses for the the liquor licenses, the class one, two, three auto dealer licenses, the entertainment licenses, the automatic amusement licenses, as presented for. The year 2023. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we can start signing all these licenses, but also I can just sign these now, these two yes. forms, because. Yes. Putting all those together, I know that's, yes. a, that's a lot of work. I used to do this and uh, went years ago when I worked for the town, and it's a huge amount of work. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Karen. It's <clears throat> Karen's time tracking down these people to remind them they need to yeah get well their you know they're they're meanwhile. busy people they're yeah you know, they're running true. businesses and um, okay so what I'm gonna just start signing these while we move through so Marlene the climate smart comprehensive plan the uh, comprehensive plan committee kicked off their first meeting last Thursday on December 8th um, I joined remotely for about a half hour because I was you know, away. Um, Patty Gambarini, who is, and Ken Camilla from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission are the consultants the town is working with. And basically what we did was just went over the, the scope of work for the committee and, and laid out, you know, proposed plan for the next two years. Introductions were, were made. Um, unfortunately, there were some people that did not make that kickoff meeting. And um, I have asked uh, Mickey Sanderson to be a co-chair, and I will be talking with another member. That's great. Also co -chair. Yeah, Mickey will be great. And um, so I'm still catching up on the rest of the meeting that evening with Patty Gambarini. Um, but one of the tasks outlined in this comprehensive plan is to provide um, equity, diversity, and inclusion training for town staff and town boards. And I know it will be difficult for members of boards and committees to join, but I, I strongly urge that town employees um, participate in the training. Mm -hmm. And so I have presented, I don't expect that you've had a chance to look at it. Um, I did see this. A, you know, a scope of, of what that training would look like. And 
I guess really the purpose of bringing this up with the board is to, to you know, get feedback from the board. You know, do we want to make this mandatory? I, I think it's really important um, that that staff, you know, even if we didn't have this comprehensive plan, it's something I would uh, recommend that employees take I, even I mean, once a year. I think if there's a way that it can also um, also so include the people hours. who are serving on board, elected and appointed officials. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a, a, a version that you, you can log on or uh, something. There should be something for everybody. So my, my thought process is, so it's a total of six hours of You're training. Faster than me. Um, so you know, we'd spread it out over uh, two or three months. Mm -hmm. And the training would be in person. My understanding is it would be in person. So I'm asking employees to, to maybe stay a little later, like an hour, you know, or do it from 3 to 4 or 4 to 5. I don't want to be done on town time. I prefer, I, mean, this I prefer to do it during regular hours, so at the end of the day. I mean, yeah, during, I, I, I don't think we need to ask people to work longer to do this, just to schedule it mm. so that. It's like a professional development yeah. It is, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's all, pretty, yeah. yeah, I don't. And, and I would agree that it, it should be during the day, and, and I'm, I guess I'm I mean, not. I would assume that um, there's plenty of um, organizations that offer this training, and during it's mostly being done mm -hmm. for employers, so during mm -hmm. the work day. Mm -hmm. It's not remote. It's all in person. I believe it's all in person. Hmm. Yeah. So there would be uh, I actually somebody think that would that's come really in great. And provide in, the training. in person better than online. Yeah, I do too. It's just this day and age. It seems like they hardly ever get that anymore. I hear you. <laughs> I think for this particular content, in person would be much better. So that's good. You know, Is this let's just, uh, let's explore you need getting that on our part. Or? Um. Well, as I say, you know, I, I am recommending strongly that employees be required to, to attend this training. So we'd have to update so our I'm, HR policy, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that, I don't know what comes first. Do we do that first or do we say you have to take the training? Yeah, you know. Why does, why do we have to update the personnel policy? Because everyone's got to take it. It's, if it's, if, if it's a. If it's a it's, fact that you have to take it in order to be employed here, is that right. or, or be a, remain? Yeah, it's a condition I mean, of a, employment. Oh, it's a yeah. condition you know, of employment. Employment okay. that you would be required. Any employee would be required to. Um, well, I would think we could take. probably fairly a, quickly get that. And is it a one-time? Is like is, will well, there be for this? Updates? It's it's part of the project, the comprehensive okay. plan, developing the comprehensive plan. It's part of that project. Um, as I, I just mentioned, though, even if we didn't have this project, yeah, um, it's still I good still would recommend that we we offer right. some well, type of training. Whether it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, it could be once a year. It doesn't have to be six a total of six hours. It could be less. I think it's a good idea. So my so my question is: Is it yearly training, or? Is is there is it a building block for future training? I would say a building block for, for future. Like, so, so the plan is next year you'd have you'd take something that built upon yes. the training you took yes. this year kind of thing, yes. right? Even and new employees would just step into wherever we are in the. That's okay. Correct. Yeah, that's how I would. Okay. I would view it. Yeah, it would be ongoing. Okay. I mean, as an employer, I think it's important that we provide training that we deem appropriate and I think we also have the right to make it mandatory if we want to make sure that everybody's on top of stuff. Well and, and a few months ago Ed you probably recall that you had a conversation with me about um, maybe even department heads being required to um, you know attend training whether it's you know remotely you know through webinars right. but to attend um, once a year and I I this is for that I think that was yeah. an excellent suggestion and but even take a little further in all employees right and I think, I, think I, I, I I really think that at least elected 
maybe even people serving on appointed boards. If it's a webinar kind of thing, for if there's that component. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it should be offered to those people. I don't know that you we can have a make an elected official or take a training. Yeah, because class. they're volunteering. Correct. Yeah, they're. A, I, I mean, it could be strongly well, recommended. I mean, we have, we have to yeah. do our code of ethics every year. That's mm -hmm. one thing. Well, that, that's other true. That, but I mean, there's certain yeah. training, like even at UMass, it was mandatory that it was important that employees attended. So mm. I guess it comes down to if you think the training is important to the employee and to the employer, then I think you make it mandatory. That's just how I feel because I've had to go to a lot of different training that was required. Likewise, so. but, but we weren't elected. We were hired. We were employees. That, that's my only point. Yeah, I don't know how we can force an elected official or an appointed yeah. official so to take a training on diversity. So it would be by policy for employees and, and strongly uh, encouraged um, for elected <coughs> and appointed officials. True. We can, we can encourage and hope that the elected mm -hmm. employee, I mean the elected officials attend. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more on the other side, not the elected side. I was thinking of more of our employees. So, Right, definitely so, for the employees. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I think, yeah, it will work well. And, and if, there's if nothing we, do, we need to do right now. If we do make any training mandatory, I think it's important to find out if there's anybody that's not attending. That's, that's important. There was a suggestion made by Mr. Moriarty about adding a policy or updating the HR policy to include that language. If we're, so well, if, if it's going to be something that continues, continues. onward and we're going to, and the board chooses that it is mandatory, that it definitely mm -hmm. has to, I would imagine it has to be in the HR policy. Yeah. I don't know that it has to be there beforehand. I mean, when is this kind of. Uh, this starting or I expect or? this will probably start in January. We're a little behind schedule. If you look at this, and we were supposed to start in November, but we, the committee just had their kickoff meeting last week. But I, I do want to note, as far as elected in f officials, there is some training that is required by the state. You have the to. Ethics, you yeah. have to. Mm -hmm. It's mandatory. So whether you're elected or not, it's right. They require it. So. On right, the other I mean, hand, we have to submit that to the town clerk, mm -hmm. the certificate of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's important. I, I'd like to find a way to have it be required for electives. But okay. in the in the eighteen thousand uh, dollars, that's the total cost. Um, the in kind match is the town's responsibility. The thirty nine hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. The fifteen thousand is through the. Um, the grant that we received, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Action Grant. Right. So if this continues the following year, is the yeah, grant guaranteed every year? To, no, no. So so the, the, the program costs $19,000. Right. I, I, I'm just throwing it out mm -hmm. there. I am not mm -hmm. against this, but I, I we just all need to understand right. that it's costing the town 4000 this year. Because we have a, a grant for fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. and then the following year, who knows about grants or mm -hmm. what the cost of the program could be, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, personally, I'd like to find out more information about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I am again, I am not against it mm -hmm. at all. I think these are important. Yeah, um, clearly, there's a funding it, piece. Still. Yes, yeah. but there's a mm -hmm. there, but there's a funding piece, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Do you know what they base the cost of the program on? 20 employees, 100 employees, does this include teachers, yeah, is this yeah. only the direct mm -hmm, town of Hatfield mm -hmm. employees? Only, and I'm only saying that because $19,000 seems like a lot of money for a six hour training program to me. Mm -hmm. I, well, I don't know if it is or it isn't. Those are good questions. And you make I, an you know, interesting point. So yeah. let's, let's say you and Karen go through this <clears throat> full training this year. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it something that Next year, there's sort of a, a you know, more of a refresher yeah. sort of thing where it's maybe not six hours, you know, you go through that. But as we onboard employees, they're required to go. I just don't know how. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. You know. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. Yes, Thanks. it is. 
Yeah. Well, like Ed, I've gone through a lot of training through the years. Yeah. So, it, and like yourself as well, I'm mm -hmm. sure. So, you know, and and sometimes you know, it, you know, it'll say phase one, two, three, four, and you have three years to complete these, or, or yeah. you know, there's all sorts of different things. So, yeah. because we want it to be useful for the employees, right? And, right. and so you you want them to do it. You want them to take the time to mm -hmm. to absorb the information. Um, but we need to know what our plan right. for the future for the future mm -hmm. for the cost and and what programs kind of come next. Right. Yeah. You know, and what does what do we do if everyone's done by the end of January on this or whenever the training's done, and somebody gets hired in March or April? Right. Are, right. Are, are they? You know. Right. Yeah. Well, for the purpose of this task that's yeah. identified that's in fine. the um, yeah. <clears throat> overall uh, comprehensive plan. Right. Th this would just be for. This this moment in moment. time, right, okay. right, and that's fine. I again, I just wanted to know, and, and, and I, I does it include the schools or no? Just town, their employees, but you know, town versus school well, department. And, I'm just and, reading the town. And staff. I had a conversation with um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission that I'd like to include the school if they're you know agreeable and it may just be the administrative staff um, or custodians. I suspect the they've done some of this. I, 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 bet, I bet they've I done so. some of They may this. have. I have not had a conversation with the superintendent. I, I'm just curious. So, um, okay. But I will follow up on that and see if, if that's something they're open to, if they haven't already done that. Well, can you imagine having a professional development day that the schools have once a month or once every couple of months, or at least they used to, and that would be a day where this training could happen, or at least half of it, and that would be the day that our all, all our employees mm -hmm. went at the same. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it just, I, and I don't know if it would yeah. come that way, but it just, mm -hmm. you know, with the proper planning, it could be that the training is on, you know, March mm -hmm. 13th. Mm. Plan on being there, everybody, unless you're on, big, you know, something like that. I don't know, mm. but. But you're right, though, they have those professional development days. I, I, I suspect they've already done this yeah, work. Probably something yeah. similar. Yeah. Okay. I'll, um, I'll follow up at our next meeting on this. So that looks like the else. end of the, um, well, the posted business, I'm except for. Forward with that. Oh, I'm, I can still move forward oh, okay. anyway with the employees oh, and, okay. and for, yeah, okay. you can still move forward. It's, but you're just talking about future. Future. Costs. Future of, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're all good. So that's the end of the posted business with the exception of the executive session. Okay. That was quick. So we'll need a motion to go into executive session. I'm on it. I'll make a motion to go into executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Number 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel and not return to open session. Well, I'll second that and towards the aye. Moriarty aye. Zinal aye. Okay.